Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to shoot and edit a time lapse, but not just any time lapse, a day to night time lapse. So let's talk about camera gear. You're gonna need a camera that has AV or manual capabilities. Also, having a built-in intervalometer or time-lapse ability. An intervalometer allows your camera to wait a specific amount of time in between each consecutive shot. You can easily just place your camera somewhere and let it sit, but if you're not in a place where you can just kind of prop up your camera or get the right composition for your frame, you're gonna need a tripod. Now, as far as the lens goes, that's gonna be up to you. I traditionally like to do something around the 24 millimeter or maybe even the 35. Staying pretty wide for time lapses is really cool and you can always punch in. Now, two very important things. One is you need to format your SD card because you need as much space as possible. Number two is make sure you have a fully charged battery because we're gonna let that sucker drain. Let's talk about location and time. Location's super important. You wanna pick a place where you're gonna have clouds or some type of movement in your shot. Having a blue sky is kind of boring. Also, if you can, find a city or some buildings because then when you do the day to night time lapse, all of the lights turn on and it looks sick. Now, what I personally do is I have an app, you can use a weather app, but you can see what time sunset is going to be. Sunset for me is in 30 minutes. So I like to show up at the location, trying to get just about 30 minutes before sunset actually occurs. And then that way that you don't spend too much time during the day getting the shots and it transitions really nicely into the nighttime. Now you have your camera set up. Let's talk about some camera settings. What I like to do is make sure to first put my camera in manual focus. The second most important thing is to make sure to set your camera's white balance. We don't want color shifting throughout the shot. Then what you wanna do is put your camera in aperture priority. That basically keeps the camera settings locked except for the shutter speed. Now, an alternative to this is putting your camera in manual, but then you're gonna have to actually sit there and manually adjust it and use Lightroom time-lapse down the road, which actually costs around $300 but my way, you're not gonna need to do that. Now let's talk about the intervals. Personally for me, I have found that around six to seven seconds is a good sweet spot, but if you guys wanna play with it, go ahead, comment down below and let me know what works better for you. I also stop the lens down to around five to 5.6, and I also turn my ISO up to about 3200 because I am preparing my camera to get good night shots. And something really important to note in this situation is I'm actually facing away from the sunset. The sunset's over there and I'm gonna be shooting that direction. That direction's gonna get darker faster. If you shoot towards the sunset or kind of near it, it's gonna take way longer for you to get this day to night effect. Go ahead and start your time lapse. The reason I'm making this video is because I think it's really important to stand out as a creator. Going above and beyond and doing shots like this is super important because it'll make you stand out from others. Plus, I just like going the extra mile and capturing something a lot of people just don't get to see. As a content creator, I am a brand and my brand is everything. But not only can you do things like this to build your brand and stand out, but something I've actually done as well is use music to connect you guys to my flavor and my style of how I want to capture and show you guys what I do and bring some energy to it. And this actually brings me to the sponsor of this video, which is Musicbed, a company I've used for years. Musicbed has a top tier music selection with over 40,000 different artists that you won't find anywhere else. I think it's really important to establish your credibility as a creator and enhance what you do with music, especially your storytelling. And also something that's really important is nowadays things pop off, things go viral. And if you are ahead of the curve and if you find something that's going to trend or something that's really popular and you have your own creative taste, to it using a specific kind of music, you're gonna stand out from others. Hear the difference for yourself and click the link down in the description. Use the code Jamie at checkout and you'll get your first month free with an annual subscription. Now what you need to do is dump your card onto your computer. And once you've done that, there's two avenues that we can go. The first one is you can go into Lightroom and export all of the photos as a DNG. Or you can download and install this free plugin, which is called Adobe DNG Converter. I'm gonna use the converter. So go ahead and select the folder where your photos are, and then select the folder of where you want to save them. I highly suggest creating a separate folder just called DNG, select that folder, and then select convert. Once you've done that, go ahead and drag the DNG folder into DaVinci Resolve. Then since this photo doesn't fill up the entire frame, I'm going to come up here to the inspector and turn this up until it does. 
Then I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard and select R to read time the clip. If you click on the top right hand corner or the top left corner, you can click and drag to speed it up. As you can see, there's some shake to this because there was wind and even though it was on a tripod, it's still a little shaky. So then I'm going to apply some stabilization. Since it's on a tripod, you can select camera lock and then select stabilize. So as you can see, this part of the time lapse is pretty sped up and then it gets really quick towards the end. So then what I'm gonna do here is add a speed point where it gets dark, click on this drop down arrow and click add speed point. Then I'm gonna click on the little down arrow that it created on this portion of the clip and I'm just going to reset to 100. Then right click on the clip and retime curve. Now we're gonna to try to smooth out the transition between the day and the night because it does speed up when it gets darker. So I try to match the speed of the dark point of the time lapse with the speed of the more lit part. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit just to test. Then I'm gonna click on the retime speed and kind of open this up so it kind of smoothly goes into it. It does look like it kind of speeds up into the dark. So I'm just gonna drag it over and kind of play back and forth with this just until it looks right. Now let's go on to the color page. I'm gonna add a few nodes just like that. On the second node, what I like to do is add some contrast and some saturation. When I add saturation, I look at the vector scope and I make sure I don't push too far outside of these boxes. If you want, you can even go to the next node and add even more saturation. On the last node, I'm going to add one of my LUTs and then come down here to the key and turn down the key output to about 0.4. On the first node, I'm actually gonna bring up the shadows just a little bit like that. I'm gonna come to the darker part of the time-lapse and zoom in and look at the noise. On this first node, I'm gonna add some noise reduction. So click motion effects, click on the frames. I like to select two. Under motion estimate type, I select better. And then I turn this up just until it starts to do its job. For spatial noise reduction, I'm gonna select better, medium radius, and then turn this up to about 16. Now, specifically for this shot, the sky was really bright because the moon had actually been right above the frame here. That's why the sky is lit up and you don't see the stars so much. So I'm gonna add another node and click on the little mask window tool here. And I'm going to draw a simple mask just around basically the tops of the mountains. Then I'm gonna come up here to the effects, click on effects, and then scroll down until I see dehaze. Then I'm gonna drag dehaze onto the clip that we just did this little masking thing on. So as you can see, there's a hard edge where we drew the mask, so we have to soften that out. So with that same node selected, come down here under the window and you'll see over here where it says softness. You can turn up the inside of this line and the outside as well. And then I'm gonna turn up the soft, just so it kind of blends it in better. Also, I'm gonna turn up the contrast of the sky and even desaturate it a little bit so it looks a little bit darker. And that's how you film and edit a day to night time lapse. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.